Hi, I'm Sam. And I'm Max. And this is Movie Nostalgia, where we give you an honest review of the movies we've meddled with so mischievously over at Maybe Movies. And this time we're going to talk about Toy Story. Yes, the 1995 Pixar film directed by John Lasseter and featuring the voice talents of Tom Hanks, Tim Allen, John Ratzenberger, Don Rickles, Annie Potts, Jim Varney and Laurie Metcalf, amongst others. Absolutely. And this uh, obviously is a bit of a different one for us because most of what we do has got some tinge of horror about it. Well, <laughs> definitely more adult-oriented. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And as you said, 1995, so if you can believe it, it's going to be 30 years old next year. Good Lord. For those of you who aren't aware, who've certainly for our, our younger viewers, this is kind of where it all started. This is the first feature-length um, CGI animated film. Yeah, 3D animated CGI, okay. yeah. I know I didn't see it at the cinema. Ah. Uh, I think I saw it now. I've got a feeling it may have been about a year, two years after, and I think I was at my brother's. This was one of the occasions where my brother had been living in France for ages and he lived back here for a while and then he went back to France. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> Before he then finally came back and sort of moved back properly. And I'm sure it was then, I'm sure I was over his because he'd seen it. It was like, oh, you haven't seen it, you need to watch it next time you're over. Ah, uh, right. Whereas it's, it's pretty simple for me, we saw it at the cinema. You did? Yeah. I saw the original short, uh, Tin... Tin Toy? Tin Toy, on British telly mm -hmm. when it first got released. I think it was BBC Two showed it. I can't remember, but they, they showed it when it first came out and I was fascinated by what they'd done with the animation. So when I heard they'd done a feature length, I was like, I've got to see what they've done. I mean, even that, I think we got that late because when I was looking it up, Tin Toy was 88. Was it really? Yeah. I seem to remember seeing it around about 1990. That would be about when I probably saw it as well. And it yeah. was just like, oh my God. It just just the story itself was fantastic. If you've never seen it, do do check it out. But apparently we owe all, all of this. We owe to, of all things, Tron. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently John Lasseter was working for Disney at the time and he saw a couple of his colleagues were working on the uh, some of the stuff for Tron and he was like, that's it. That's what I want to do. That's the future. Oh, right. Okay, it's as simple as that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, who hasn't, has, who hasn't seen Toy Story? I'm sorry, but... Well, only very young children, pretty much. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not surprisingly, and if you have seen it, this one, you know, it, it beat all expectations. Had a budget of 30 million. They conservatively, 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 yeah, that's, yeah, he can talk, I can't, expected to make about 60, maybe 75, uh-huh, 363, yep, yep, hit the jackpot on there, didn't they, and then up to 394 worldwide, 394 million worldwide, when they re-released it in 2009, oh, right, so, yeah, second highest grossing film of 95, only beaten by Die Hard with a Vengeance. Right, take sleep to catch up. Oh, God! See, that works. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, this is a, a fascinating one. It is literally a family film. Everybody will get something out of it. Yeah, there's there's some nice little nods in there for the grown-ups. I, I notice more and more of them every time I watch it. Same, same here. There are certain things in it, I suppose, because of the relative ages of the people making it there's certain things in there that we would you know spot and make sense to us mm -hmm. that may be lost on on younger viewers but then again if you're an interesting movie you'll you'll pick them out eventually one that i found out um when i was watching it i was like hang on and i had to look it up afterwards the carpet in <laughs> hallway in sid's house mm -hmm. it's the same design as the carpet from the overlook oh <laughs> I missed that. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, hang on, that, that looks familiar. <laughs> what can I say about this? Well, for myself, this was probably the first animated movie that I watched as a as an adult. Because mm. in my middle to late teens, I became extremely snobby about things that I considered childish. So I stopped watching a lot of animated stuff. Not all of it, but a lot of it. And like I say, because I knew... The original animation from the team mm -hmm. and I was fascinated by the new technology that was my excuse for going to see it yeah I can justify um, seeing a kids movie on that on that basis yeah absolutely and um, yeah I would, I'm glad I did I, I remember enjoying it a lot at the time this is not one of those life-changing movies it's just entertaining uh, but I do remember enjoying it at the time and I still do enjoy it yeah 
yeah, yeah. after, as you just rightly pointed out, nearly 30 years. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Well, again, there are some lovely messages in it, you know, about friendship and things like that, which is kind of universal, really. Oh, absolutely. Even that, when you look into like, the development of the story and things like this, because this was Pixar's first production as, as a company, mm -hmm. and yes. they were working in conjunction with Disney, and they kept getting sent notes, and the overall producer from Disney, John Katzenberg, Jack Katzenberg, kept sending them notes saying, it needs to be edgier, it needs to be edgier. And when they finally took them something, he hated it. Oh, of course, yeah. Um, and uh, Woody was this horrible, horribly, really unlikable character. Oh, yeah, he was the villain, wasn't he, in an early draft? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Disney shut them down, said, you know, oh, just halt everything, we don't know what, we don't know if we want to carry on funding this. And that's when John Lasseter and the team just went, well, let, let's not worry about the notes that they've been giving us over the past few months, let's just make the film that we want. Yes. And that's what we got. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. Apparently, though, they had originally because they had the, they had the idea of the old toy and the new toy. Mm -hmm. The original one was the old toy was going to be a a ventriloquist's dummy. Oh, creepy! Yeah, uh, but the new toy because they had wanted to do like an evolution of the toy from Tin Toy. Oh, I see. Right. Yeah. But then, as things progressed, and they moved it because it was supposed to all be set in like this guy's sort of junk shop. Oh, right. Oh, very different. Then. Yeah. 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 And then it got moved to a child's bedroom, and then they kind of figured, oh, well, hang on, a tin toy, is that really going to get a 90s kid excited mm -hmm. as a new toy, so we want to go more action figure? Yeah, of course. And then it all kind of evolved from there. I like what they settled on, because, you know, Woody is from, like, the 50s and the 60s era mm. of child's toys. His general construction, the ripcord voice box, and all of that stuff was... Very much in, in vogue at those times. And then if you look at Buzz, he's more of a late 70s, early 80s Absolutely. toy. So, generationally speaking, you could you can see where they where they come into it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, especially the <laughs> amazing chopping action. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All of that kind of stuff. Uh, just gave me just uh, memories of watching adverts for uh, Action Man with his eagle eyes. Action Man and his eagle eyes. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Although, uh, what was it? Oh god, who was it? That, um, I think it was Hasbro. Wouldn't give them permission to use GI Joe. Oh right. That's why we got um, Combat Carl. Yes, <laughs> I thought so. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a shame. Uh, yeah, it would have been a nice touch. But it's also, I think, apparently because of this that we then got Billy Crystal in Monsters because he was offered one of the parts and turned it down. All right. And then, as after this came out, John Lasseter still wanted to work with him, so he called him up. And his wife answered the phone, Billy Crystal's wife answered the phone, said, oh, it's John Lasseter for you. Just tell him yes. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently John Ratzenberger is their good luck charm. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, apparently after this, he's in, he's in some shape or form, he's in every Pixar. I did wonder. I did notice his name has popped up a lot over the years. Yeah, which is weird. I mean, that's always a weird one. So I'm going to go off on a bit of a tangent here. That's always a bit of a weird one for me, because he is such a good voice actor. But I always associate him with the really kind of, un not unlikable, but just the kind of boring character because he was Cliff in Cheers. Yes. Women fighting is very unladylike. Unless, of course, they're wallowing around in mud pits. <laughs> and that's my go-to for John Ransom. <laughs> you know, that's, that was, that's how I first encountered him. So, yeah, I mean, he used to love Cheers when I was a kid. Yeah. And then I saw House 2. <laughs> oh, he... I, I, no. No, not House 2. House is it house? I it, it is house, house yes. Both both Cliff and Norm and are Norm in house. George Wayne, yeah, are in house. Okay, I honestly thought it was house too. Okay. Now there's an all new house. It's like you got some kind of alternate universe in there or something. But anyway, sorry, tangent. Tangent <laughs> over. Yes. <laughs> I mean, we haven't actually done the plot yet. So, would you like me, or would you like me to? Well, it's a pretty simple plot. Like I say, most of you will already know it, but it's the tale of Woody and his friends who are all the toys of a young man named Andy, and the adventures they have when Andy gets a new toy for his birthday. One Buzz Lightyear. Space Ranger. And stuff, adventures, and shenanigans ensue. Yes. Just in case you've never seen it. But no, do do check it out. Again, especially if it's... I mean, I'd be, I wouldn't be surprised if they re-release it for the 30th anniversary. So if you get a chance to see it at the cinema, then do, because it still holds up. Well, really you know there's, there's a fifth one coming. Oh yeah, there is, isn't there? Yeah, there is a fifth one coming. When is that due? Is that this year? I'm not sure if it's this year or next year, but yeah, it's not far uh, off. I don't think I, do, I don't think I've I have seen four, 
but that's only because we have a, a DVD and a, and a screen in the children's um, emergency department at work, mm. and so they've moved it now, so we can't. But where we used to sit, where we sit on reception, there's a window and you can look through and just watch films. No, <laughs> but now they've moved it around the other side. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, but I have. So I've seen bits of four, but I've never sat down and watched it all the way through. I haven't seen it at all because I think the third one was a bit. I wasn't overly sold on the third one. Well, at a certain point, I start to recognise that these films aren't for me. And I mm. don't mean that in a horrible, grumpy old man way. But just, like, the first film, I liked it and I loved the concept of it and the conceit of it. And the second one I liked because of the stuff about collecting, you know, being an adult collector, yes. and I can yeah. relate to that. Absolutely. But after that, I kind of feel like a lot of it sort of left me behind. I didn't dislike the third movie, but it didn't rock my world. Okay. This one, I mean, um, obviously, it is... I'm giving it both because it's it's a great film. Again, I love watching it. I can always get back and watch it. I wouldn't say it's one of my top tier of like sort of feel good films, but if sometimes if I need to, I can always pick it up and and it brings it brings a smile to my face. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give it two for that. I'm going to give it two for the kids, but just the one for the adults. It's nice, it's fun, but it's really for the kids, and that's what you should take away from it. Absolutely. And from one young man called Andy. To another young man called Andy and his friends till the end. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time. As always, guys, TTFN. I've seen enough tragedy and disaster to make you want to up chuck in your shorts. <laughs> <laughs>